Hi, welcome to Hymns with Ken. This channel exists to reach those who are not in a position to go to church to participate in worship, to those who have never heard or miss hearing these powerful hymns of the church. My prayer is that you would be ministered to by God's Holy Spirit as you listen. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, comment on the video if it ministered to you, and subscribe to the channel and ring that bell, enabling you to receive all the new updates. Battle Hymn of the Republic, written in 1861. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. After the September 11th, 2001 attacks on the Pentagon and the World Trade Center, a national service of prayer and remembrance was conducted at Washington's National Cathedral. America's most powerful leaders prayed together, listened to brief sermons by evangelist Billy Graham and others, then joined voices to sing the defiant anthem, Battle Hymn of the Republic. Its words seem to perfectly signal America's intention to battle the forces of terror in the world. Battle Hymn of the Republic was written by Julia Ward Howe, a leader in women's rights and an ardent foe of slavery. Julia, who came from a wealthy New York family, was married to prominent Boston philanthropist and humanitarian Dr. S. G. Howe. They were both crusaders for progressive political and moral issues of the day. In 1861, during the darkest days of the Civil War, the Howes visited Washington, and Julia toured a nearby Union Army camp on the Potomac in Virginia. There she heard soldiers singing a tribute to John Brown, who had been hanged in 1859 for attempting to lead an insurrection of slaves at Harper's Ferry. John Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave. The music was rousing, but the words needed improvement. Julia's pastor, who accompanied her, asked her to consider writing new and better verses. That night, after the Howes retired to their room at the Willard Hotel, the words came. I went to bed and slept as usual but awoke the next morning in the gray of the early dawn, and to my astonishment found that the wish-forward lines were arranging themselves in my brain. I lay quite still until the last verse had completed itself in my thoughts, then hastily arose, saying to myself, I shall lose this if I don't write it down immediately. I searched for an old sheet of paper and an old stub of pen, which I had had the night before, and began to scrawl the lines almost without looking, as I learned to do by often scratching down verses in the darkened room when my little children were sleeping. Having completed this, I lay down again and fell asleep, but not before feeling that something of importance had happened to me. Julia gave her song to a friend who worked at the Atlantic Monthly, the magazine published it in February 1862, sending her a check for $5.